Well, hello there. Today, All Day Family, we made it. It's Friday. TGIF, Hodes. I love that. All right, we're happy to say it's Friday. Yay! Yay! You're watching our digital show today in 30, and after we close out the week here, we've got another big show. Yeah, we'll start with the big decision that's now in the hands of health officials. Will Pfizer's vaccine be approved for kids age 5 to 11? And if so... How soon could our kids get those first shots? We're going to bring you everything you need to know. Yep, and then our own Kerry Sanders. He joined us from Maine, where he attempted to get an up-close and personal look with some moose. The reason? A big weather change is making them harder to find. Fill us in. Plus, we invited my new friend and Today Show super fan Ellie Carr here to New York to make up for a milestone she missed during the pandemic, her class trip. Well, wait till you see all the fun that she had. Can't yeah, wait. And then we're going to wrap things up with a pasta party. Our good friend Anthony Scotto, who's got some great dishes that are really simple to make for your family this weekend. It sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into a big steaming bowl of Today, Today in 30. 30. First, NBC's Gabe Gutierrez joins us. Gabe, good morning. Savannah, good morning. Shots for this new age group could ship out before Thanksgiving, a potential light at the end of the tunnel for many families ahead of the holiday season. This morning, a critical decision now on the horizon, not just for the FDA, but for the parents of more than 28 million school-aged children. We'll be the first in line when we can be. An FDA advisory panel will meet October 26 to consider Pfizer's application for emergency use of their vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. If the panel approves, the CDC is expected to make a final decision soon after, setting up a new wave of vaccinations just before the holidays. Pfizer's trial included nearly 2,300 participants ages 5 to 11 who were given two doses 21 days apart. The mini doses were 10 micrograms each, a third of the already approved amount for adults. Pfizer's head of vaccine development telling Savannah last month. The level of antibody the vaccine is generating in children 5 to 11 matches the level of antibody that we know provides protection for individuals 16 years of age and older. The pandemic's impact on kids has been wide ranging. New research shows that nearly 130,000 children have lost a primary caregiver from COVID. A disproportionate number, 65%, are racial or ethnic minorities. And this year, as schools began opening up, COVID cases among kids skyrocketed. The American Academy of Pediatrics counted nearly 850,000 child COVID cases just in September, representing more than one in four infections nationwide. Despite that, a recent survey found a third of parents of 5 to 11-year-olds say they will wait and see before vaccinating their children. Introducing something that's so brand new is always questionable. Um, it's just something I'm going to have to do some research on. Medical experts are urging parents to speak to their pediatricians and consider other potential upsides to the vaccine, saying it can help children stay in school without interruption, allow them to participate in their favorite activities, and see older family members. Adding another layer of protection with vaccination just gives them more opportunities to get that development that they need. Next week, the FDA advisory panel is set to discuss another crucial issue, whether to authorize Moderna and Johnson & Johnson booster shots. We are with more of our Today Climate series. And this morning, a first-hand look at how the warming of our planet is taking a toll on wildlife. And NBC's Carrie Sanders is in Maine because a longtime local favorite is very much in need of help. Carrie? Well, good morning, guys. The autumn colors here in Maine have come later than usual. Climate scientists say that these days, fall is later, the winters here are shorter, and spring comes sooner than it ever did. All of this a function of climate change that biologists say is having a devastating impact on one of this state's iconic animals, the moose. Majestic, magnificent, but here in Maine, moose are in peril. But we're getting October, November weather where we're getting 70 degrees into the 80s. And every day it's warm out. I know what's going on in the woods today. What's going on is climate change. Biologists in Maine say winters are now two weeks shorter than they once were. That gives the blood-sucking ticks that only target moose 14 extra days to latch onto them in numbers never before seen. Now you got 60,000 ticks taking blood on you at a time of year where you're trying to make it through with your fat reserves. So they're weakened? So they're weakened, they're anemic. 
Those thousands of ticks are drawing an astonishing 15 gallons of blood from the moose every two weeks, close to half of a moose's total blood supply. Increasingly, moose, especially the calves, are dying. We join state biologists on an aerial survey of Maine's northern moose territory. Off we go, and we're airborne. In this sparsely populated region, there are three moose for every resident. There's a moose down there. There's one there. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough to see. Two decades ago, there were 100,000 moose in Maine. Now it's estimated there are only 60,000. Ticks to moose are like mosquitoes to humans. You imagine yourself out in the woods and there's mosquitoes everywhere. You don't have any bug repellent and your hands are tied behind your back. There's no way to escape those insects. That sounds very painful and in this case it can be deadly. Absolutely. Moose tours are big business, but spotting a moose, which is never easy, has become even more difficult. You don't make appointments with nature. <laughs> so you feel lucky today? Yes. Moose callers like veteran master guide Roger Lambert mimic a female moose. That's a cow. That's a cow. So right. you're trying to call the male out. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they play act because a moose's eyesight is so poor. A comical routine that at times draws moose out of the woods. But it goes quick. See, ah, and you do a little nasal, you know, a little stuff. Are you squeezing your nose? You, a little bit, yeah, if you need to. Damn good, Carrie. That's damn good. Really? You didn't even start out with that. I learned from the best. And bingo, a moose. Those regal antlers up to five feet wide. Mother Nature in all her glory takes your breath away. In what may sound counterintuitive to save the moose, state biologists say some must be sacrificed to hunters. The theory, with fewer moose, the ticks will die. It's believed then a healthy moose population can rebuild. State biologists say it'll take about five years to see if what they're doing helps so that the next time somebody does this, we'll actually see lots of moose. Oh, God, Jerry. I think he that found was his awesome. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He found really his calling. Ow. Ow. Get it? That's, come on. Uh, come on. But it doesn't it. sound like a. Come on, try, try. Ah. <laughs> Sounds like a goat. <laughs> like a frog. Or a frog. Wow. Duck in distress. Like a toad. And we're back with milestones that we missed, our ongoing series helping people make up for all those special moments and events that were put on hold during the pandemic. All right, Savannah, this morning is not your everyday morning. It's no. extra special. Yeah, you guys probably remember we introduced you to Ellie Carr back in August, and we promised to help her fulfill her missed yeah. milestone. She had planned a senior trip to New York, but it didn't get to happen because of the pandemic. So oh. we brought Ellie, her mom, Lisa, her stepdad, Scott, up here from Texas, and with the help of our friends at Hamilton, Ellie was treated to the experience of a lifetime. <laughs> Ellie had planned a trip that she'd been thinking about for at least a couple of years wanting to go to New York City after graduation. And I want to go to the senior trip. But her senior trip last year to the Big Apple was canceled due to the pandemic. For Ellie's senior trip, we had planned to make a visit to the Statue of Liberty, some Broadway musicals. Hamilton is her absolute favorite. When we heard Ellie missed out on her big trip, we wanted to help. So this summer, we surprised her. What do you think about wow. coming to New York City and coming to visit us on the Today Show? Would you like to do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and make up for that lost senior trip? Then this happened. Hi, Ellie. I heard you are a Hamilton super fan. We're reserving two seats for you and your mom to come see Hamilton in New York City. With the help of the Today Show, you're finally going to get to come to New York City for that senior trip. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ready to go to New York City? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. New York City, here you come. Two months later, her dream trip became reality. Oh, my God! With her Hamilton star painted toes, Ellie was ready for Broadway. Ah! What do you think? It's amazing! <laughs> 
Ellie found out today that she gets to meet the Skylar sisters. She's so excited. History is happening in Manhattan, and Ellie, you happen to be in the greatest city in the world, in the greatest city in the world. Welcome to Broadway. Loves the Skylar sisters, yeah. and she can work it. Oh, yes. that's right. Yes. Can you work? Can we see yeah. work? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite song in the show? Um, helpless. Oh, okay. I love it. Boy, you got me helpless. Oh my gosh. Look into your eyes, and the sky's the limit. I'm helpless. Down for the count, and I'm drowning, and I'm yeah. <laughs> Boys. Oh, so, thank you. Thank you so much. Should we do a work pose? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ready? For Ellie, a magical evening in the room where it happened. Before continuing their tour of New York City, I met up with Ellie and her family. Ellie. But today show's right there. Yeah, I know. Ah! You're gonna come visit the show and see everybody? Yes. Hi, Mom. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you? Thank you. Did you see Hamilton? Yes. What was it like? Skylar sisters. Oh, the Skylar sisters. You Did they meet the actual Skylar sisters? Mm -hmm. Did you show them how you know all the songs? Yes. Oh, my gosh. What a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Is this the dream trip you were hoping for? Yes, this is the trip of our dreams. Oh. I'm so yes. glad. Well, that is awesome. You know, I love the view here, but there is an even better view, and it's all the way up there. Oh, wow. After a quick photo op at the top of the rock, it was time to see Lady Liberty, something Ellie had always wanted to do. It's just been a, a huge welcome. We can't thank you enough. I look so happy right now. Little happy tears. We love you, New York! Oh my goodness. Wow, there's just oh. one more stop on the tour for Ellie and Lisa. It's right here on the Today Show set. How was it, Ellie? How was it, Lisa? Did you have fun? Yes. Oh. Incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. I've been talking about you uh -huh. all these months. What was their favorite part, Ellie, so far? Uh, I like it everything. Yeah, yeah, I know. Everything was Every good. Every single, the Skylar sisters singing just to you was pretty amazing, Ellie. Pretty cool. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so <laughs> welcome. I, you know I can't stop hugging you, so I'm just coming over for one more before you go, my love. Thank Thank you for visiting us. We love you. We love, love you, Lisa. Ellie. We love, love you. We love you, Lisa. Oh, and now you know awesome. it, so come back and visit anytime, okay? Okay. 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 Yes. That was awesome. Oh, beautiful. Ellie. One of us. Lisa, we love you. We are so excited. NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki here in the Hi. studio. Hey guys, great to be here. We haven't seen each other in person in a while. So yes. he's going to break down the NFL season this far. All right, so let's dig in. So the international games are back this year. Tell me about the games in London. What's going on there? Yeah, this is an interesting NFL tradition the last 15 years or so. The NFL in London, 2007, they started doing, it's usually a couple games a year. So they're up to 28 games now. This Sunday, okay. it's going to be the Jets and the Falcons. The Falcons are actually going to be the home team, if you can mm. call them that. Then next Sunday, the second game, that's going to be the Dolphins and the Jaguars. And it's interesting because the Jaguars have played, since the series began, uh -huh. they have played more games in London than any NFL team. This is huh. going to be the eighth time they've done it. But they took a poll in England okay. and said, who's your favorite NFL team? It was not the Jaguars. Oh, the it Dolphins. It was the Dolphins, 22%. Oh, Second place was the Bears. Interesting. Okay. Dolphins have been there a few times, but mm -hmm. the poor Jags didn't even make the top five. <laughs> so, so could we possibly see uh, an NFL franchise in jolly old England? It, this is the thing everybody's always talking about. When these games are played, is the NFL looking to put a franchise in London? Put this in some perspective. Okay. Falcons, Jets, this is what the journey looks like for them oh, for my this gosh. game. So 4,200 miles. 3,400 miles. And th wow. this would be, if there were a team right here in London, sure. 
This would be one of the closest road trips yeah. for them. If you look at it, here's all the NFL cities. The that. longest road trip the London franchise would have mm. to go to the West Coast over 5,000 miles. So there's no natural division right. yeah. to put the team in. But there's only eight, nine you know, road trips a year. So is it that crazy? I don't, I don't know. know. Why we'll not? see. There are hey. fans over there. Okay, so the London game isn't the only uh, one happening this weekend. So what does the league look like now? So let's take you through the standings here. Start with the AFC Big surprise, maybe in the AFC. I mean, how about this? The Steelers, one in three. Wow. Big Ben really showing Ooh. his age. Remember, last year, the Steelers started the season 11 and 0. Yeah. They went one and four to finish the year. They're one and three now. They've lost five of their last seven games. It seems like the tide has just turned in Pittsburgh. Take a look at the NFC here, defending Super Bowl champ, the Bucs, but the only undefeated team in the NFL. Look at this. No one had this at the start of the year. The 4 and 0 Arizona Cardinals, That's Tyler amazing. Murray, okay. MVP candidate. Okay, so. Everybody's thinking uh, already Super Bowl. What do you think? Mm. Well, what's, we what, got, what's, what are the numbers? Here? We got the odds on the Super Bowl. So I showed you the Cardinals may have the best record, the right. only undefeated team. But here's the best odds to win the Super Bowl. You don't even see the Cardinals on here. No respect yet. <laughs> People yeah. aren't believing yet. Yeah. 15 to 1. It's still Look at last Kansas year's City. two teams. That's yeah, the Chiefs are still a slight favorite. Mm -hmm. Tampa, they got that win over the Patriots. Yeah. Looked a little shaky, maybe. They're a little beat up right now. And the Buffalo Bills sitting there at 9-1. to one. Rams played last night. They got a win. It's technically about 9.5-1 to one for the Rams. But mm -hmm. it's kind of wide open. The Ravens okay. have been on fire lately. And the Ravens are looking. You see the Ravens ticking up 12-1. to one. And the, pa the Packers had that awful week one. But mm -hmm. since then, they're looking like the Packers of old. So there's a lot of teams in Tension here, and like I said, you look at those standings, some yeah. surprises. We'll Could see happen. what the you're having fun doing the, the, the NFL Sunday. I'm, I mean, I've been watching it as a fan for years, so it's really cool to get a chance uh, to do this. We love having you part of it. I know, and lo we love when you come. I love it Thank too. You Thank, you Thank you, guys. We've got our Karnacki club. fan club. <laughs> yes. Okay, remember this Sunday night, it's a showdown of two of Steve's Super Bowl favorites, Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs, facing off at Arrowhead Stadium in a clash of the titans. Sunday night, football night in America. It begins Sunday night at 7 right here on NBC and Peacock. All right, the weekend is almost here, and it's when you want to relax and take a break from your everyday routine, which includes, of course, cooking. So we have a dish that you can make and serve at Sunday dinner. It actually tastes better even after a couple of days. Our good friend Anthony Scotto, just a couple of blocks away at Fresco by Scotto Restaurant. It's so cool there, oh, by the way. It's amazing. Is. All right, and he's going to show us a classic ziti straight from their new fall menu. Hi, Anthony. Anthony, by the way, before you get to this food, the ambiance, the cool mm -hmm. feel, the surge in popularity at an already popular restaurant has really been off the charts. We're in the midst of Midtown Manhattan. Uh, it's at the business area. Notoriously, everyone is buzzling and, and really working here. Unfortunately, with COVID, it's really taken a long time to get it recovered. But we've created our own oasis, uh, both with outside and, of course, the interior of what we've done here is just absolutely beautiful. Okay, right. well, you know what? And those flowers, Yeah. we don't know how you did that, but that just looks gorgeous. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's a, there's a shout-out to Larry Scott there, just so you know. We'll go Larry. Okay. okay, so, so this dish yeah. is something that kids and everybody will want to eat together. Tell yes. us how we can make this ahead. Yeah, so I want you to remember that we're going to do this in two different ways because what I want you to do is think that you're going to have a bolognese to start with. You'll have that on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Oh. You're going to put that in the refrigerator, and then you are going to put this all together on a Friday for the weekend. So if we're starting with, we're going to use a, Z a ZD that we have here. Always after you've cooked the ziti al dente, you're going to add a little olive oil to this. Let it cool, uh -huh. set it on the side. Uh -huh. We're going to do our bolognese notoriously. What we do here at Fresco by Scotto is with veal oh. and chicken. Okay. This is another conversation. You don't have to use veal and chicken. You can use sausage. If you don't want to use sausage, you could use any vegetable you'd like. But we're going to do this now. We're going to add a little red pepper. A little salt. Yeah. And then I'm going to add in a little mirepoix of vegetables. These mirepoix of vegetables are simply carrots, celery, fennel, which is another secret of Fresco oh. by Scotto. You want to add a little dried oregano also. Okay. And you're going to let this brown. 
So this would have been your bolognese on a Wednesday, if you understand that. You're going to set that aside. You might enjoy some pasta with that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. This is your leftover. You're going to let this brown. Okay. So once that's browned, we're going to add a little tomato sauce to this. Yeah. And we're going to let this cool probably, I'm sorry, we're going to let this cook probably for another half an hour to 45 minutes. Okay. And then let that cool. So okay. this is all cool. Your pasta is cool, and anything else we're adding to this is going to be cool. You're going to get a mixing bowl. Hey, Anthony, can I ask a question? You cook, that, that, you kick, you cook that pasta al dente. Is that because you're going to yes. do some more baking? Yeah. Is that what's happening with that? Yes, because we're going to recook it ah. again just okay. to heat it all Got up. It. Got it. But I remember, everything that we're doing now is not cooked, and then we're just adding the cheeses to it. Got yeah. it. So now you're going to add your pasta. Uh-huh. You're going to add some fresh ricotta cheese. Yum. Ricotta. You're going to add some Parmesan cheese. Look at that scoop. How much do you You're going to add some More. tomato sauce. Yes. You're going to add some fresh basil. Oh. And this, after you've mixed it, is going to start looking like this. Okay. You're going to put this in a casserole dish. Mm-hmm. And in this casserole dish, we're going to build it. So we've added our first layer. I've added some tomato sauce and Parmesan cheese. Remember, ooey and gooey is all this is about. Look at that. Yeah, oh, baby. Yes. We're going to add a little bit more. Oh, my God. Gosh, Look Louis and happening. Louis. And then we're going to add a little bit more ricotta cheese. So yes. everybody gets this, yes? Yeah, seems Layer like it's, it. okay. it's pasta We're going to add cheese. a little tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little Layering. basil. I see. A little parsley. So that's your second layer. Then you're going to build a second layer, a third layer again. Only the last layer you're going to add, add a little oregano, uh -huh. a little salt, and red pepper. Okay. And how long do you and bake it for? And then what you're going to do is you say it again. How long do you bake it for? Yeah, so let's do that. So once okay. we've done this and you've had your full layer, you're going to wrap it with, uh, with cellophane. No, I'm sorry. You're going to wrap it with aluminum wrap. Yeah. You're going to put it in the oven for about 350, 375 for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then take the wrapping off and, and bake it for another 10 minutes, which will then look like this. Brown the top. Yes. yes. Brown and, <laughs> and crunchy on top, ooey and gooey in the side. I yeah. built a little plate here already. And you say don't a little serve it right sauce away. And cheese. It, don't serve it right away, Anthony, right? You got to let it sit for a minute? Yeah, I would tell you to let it sit for like 15, 20 minutes. But okay. remember, the longer you sit, the less you're going to get the stringiness of the uh, oh. mozzarella cheese oh. and all the gooiness that's inside there. Okay. All right, well, so, cheers to the weekend. This is delicious. Anthony. Happy you're here. Oh. We're happy to eat. By the way, thank you for sending the food. We were hungry. Fresco by I'm, Scott. And also, is... I sent a little glass of wine, too, for oh, later I on. I know. Thank oh, you. Thank you. you. Think we, that was not mm -hmm. lost on us. We thank haven't you. had wine thank in a bit. Thank you, Anthony. All right. To make this thank recipe very, at home. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Go to today.com slash food. Hope you have a great weekend and hope you tune in Monday. We've got a big event here on today. We're going to celebrate International Day of the Girl with a special and really inspiring morning on our plaza. We'll see you guys Monday. Have a great weekend.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.